What's up, Tim Sykes here. Uh, middle of the night in Bali. Wanted to do a video lesson just about the markets and I'm getting so many questions about what I see going forward. Um, how to stay safe. You know, I'm sorry that so many people are getting destroyed. Actually, leave a comment below. Are you staying safe? Are you following rule number one and cutting losses quickly? Or are you going down with a ship holding and hoping like a damn newbie? Um, this is the S&P 500. We've come up very far, but now we are breaking these multi-week, multi-month lows. The NASDAQ finished literally, you know, below support and it actually tried to bounce on Thursday, which makes it that much worse. Um, I hope that you're staying safe, but be honest in the comments, you know, like I don't care if you're losing a lot or if you're breaking even. Um, honesty matters. OK, if you're losing a lot, that sucks. But hopefully at least you can learn from it. Um, don't just lose a lot and then pretend it doesn't happen. Don't be like, you know, these Twitter traders, like these short sellers and these Discord promoters who don't show all their trades um, publicly. Be honest. It's all about improving your process. Once upon a time, I lost $500,000 plus two when I didn't know any better. And frankly, that's where a lot of people are. This is why I got started teaching. Um, I want you to know better. Um, let me just remind you, I'm going to actually post a link to this other video uh, below this video just so you can watch it. This was what, like six months ago where I gave a speech at this conference. I was wearing a hard hat and a construction outfit. And I said, why am I wearing this? Because a crash can happen at any time and I wanted to be prepared. And the whole audience laughed. Every other speaker was ridiculously bullish um, saying, oh, you know, you're just worrying. You're just a contrarian. I saw the signs of far too much speculation. This stimulus check funded bubble is over. I'm sorry to be the one to tell you. Hopefully you listened to me, um, you know, several months ago. None of my top students or I are getting hurt. That's the cool thing. And I'm not saying this to brag. I'm trying to help you understand why I teach, why I am so proud to pass down these lessons. Um, right now, the NASDAQ is down 20% plus year to date. The Dow, I think, is down like 10%. Uh, the S&P, I think, is down like 12%. I mean, just on Friday, the NASDAQ dropped like 4%. Like, this is a terrible market if you're unprepared. Um, so before I get into uh, reviewing some stocks, I do want to mention we have something cool coming up. Um, you know, the world has been closed for a very long time. I haven't been able to do uh, in-person, um, you know, teaching. I haven't been able to travel. This is my first time in Bali in two plus years. We built 22 schools during the pandemic, which is cool. But I'm also getting back to in-person teaching. Um, so I'm going to post a link right below this video. Uh, this is with me and Roland. And I filmed this the other day. exciting announcement. We're doing a three... There's too much volume going on. City, U.S. boot camp tour, Austin, Miami, Vegas. Look at Roland. Look how excited he is. Both of us were exhausted. We had been filming all day, but we wanted to film this video. Um, I'll post a link to it. But long story short, we're doing several in-person um, coaching uh, in Austin, Texas, and then also Las Vegas, and then the third event. Probably going to be Miami, but it'll be, um, you know, probably in September. And we're going to figure that out because then we also have my big in-person conference, which is coming up probably going to be in October, November. Lots to learn, but this is very cool because it's not just going to be me and Roland. Um, oh, let me scroll up so you can see what the title on this website says. Um, join me and Roland and surprise guests. Uh, for two days of live trading and education. It's two days, two days, two days. It's basically six days total if you come to all three of these special events, or you can come to one, or you can come to two. I mean, it's, it's up to you. Um, and it'll also be recorded and live streamed, but it's better to be in person. It's amazing to network in person. It's amazing to see this in person. Um, you know, you can see that I'm real. You can see that my millionaire students are real. Uh, Roland and I are confirmed, but we also have several guests um, that we're going to surprise you with. And in case you didn't realize, as I'm filming this, I have 25 plus millionaire students. They are all over the place, all over um, really the world now. It's not just Americans. We have some international uh, millionaires like Roy. Uh, fantastic job uh, to him. But, you know, you don't have to go down with the ship. That's the gist of this video. I'm going to get into some specific stocks, but it's crazy how many people are like, you know, Kathy Wood, where she's on CNBC and all the all the press everywhere. And look at her ARKK. I mean, this is abysmal. This is pathetic. And she's supposedly an expert. She has the risk management of an ant. I'm sorry. I respect what she did in the past. She maximized the bubble, but she, I think, believed her own, you know, hype. 
Never believe your own hype on any pump, okay? She pumped herself and now, unfortunately, ARKK is dumping. And it's not just her. I mean, it's it's everything. Like BUZZ, remember this came out? Like, well, oh, we're gonna invest in all the social media uh, stocks. Like anything that's hyped up on social media. And this thing is collapsing. BITO, remember this uh, very massively pumped, hyped up uh, Bitcoin uh, related ETF. And this one is way off of its highs. These are just a few examples. I mean, if you go with like penny stocks, you go with HMBL. I never had so many haters when I called this a pump. I'm sorry, it was promoted. Uh, ENZC, this one actually came back a little bit. It has a few little rebounds. So learn my seven step framework. It's not just about these stocks going straight down. Sometimes they do bounce for a few days. Um, you know, and I could bring up tons of them. But the point is, none of my top students that I, like Roland, He's up a little over 60 grand. I'm up a little over 60 grand a uh, year to date. And we show every single trade. And it's not like I'm not losing. I got a little too aggressive on ACON and JZXN, but I nailed KGKG. In fact, I underestimated it. I underestimated LCLP. Um, so, you know, nothing huge, but 60 grand year to date is not bad. And if you actually go out, you know, one year, not just year to date. I mean, year to date is when the NASDAQ is dropping 20% plus. So it's been tough. But over the past year, 300,000 plus, um, all donated to charity. And that's why part of the reason why I'm here in Bali. Um, I don't just donate the money. I also travel to these communities to meet with the, you know, village leaders. I want to see exactly what they need. And when I post photos and videos, the cool thing is you guys also look to build schools. Uh, Karmagawa has 40, what, 46 schools in Bali now. Um, but we donate to Bali Children's Project. They now have closing in on 100 schools total. Um, and that's all, you know, social media followers for me and from Karma Gala. So thank you, whoever you guys are for your support. There's a lot of anonymous donors. It doesn't matter as long as they get the schools. Um, and Bali Children's Project had never built any schools before um, I started donating. They donated like toys and books. I started this and now, you know, we want more schools. So understand all of this money that I make from trading goes to charity. Why? Because I'm focused on teaching the process. This is what I'm more proud of. Here is Kyle Williams. Look at this guy, okay? Year to date, he's up 200,000 plus. But if you go out to one year, he's actually over 3 million now total. And in the past year, he's made 1.3 million. And frankly, a lot of people are making money on shorting right now. Um, I haven't shorted any other stock than Robinhood in the past two years. I probably should have shorted DOGZ. Um, you know, the, the more shorts that, that work, I mean, this is a classic seven step framework where you have the classic number three run up and then the four crash, a little bit of a bounce for number five. Then you get like a number six. And then again, you get this crash, the number four, it can go backwards too. If you know my seven step framework, um, congrats to shorts on, on DOGZ. And then actually was a pretty good dip buy too. So if you learn the patterns, I mean, this is Kyle, he might be one of the surprise guests, FYI. Um, here is Jack Kellogg. You know, he's had some losses too. Like it's okay to have some losses. I know everyone's like, Oh my God, Jack is amazing. Look at this over the past 30 days, he's lost $48,000. Okay. So don't think that every trader is absolutely perfect all the time, but Jack Kellogg over the past year has done fantastic, um, 3 million in profits in the past year. Um, so it's not just about, you know, being so right in any one day, week, or even month. It's the overall gains. Um, and, you know, sometimes you're going to lose, especially when you're testing new strategies. Um, here is Jack Daniel, Jack Schwartz. Just graduated college. I actually took a trip with him and his girlfriend uh, the other week. I haven't even posted about it on social media. Flew them out to, uh, uh, where did we go? We were in Sweden. Yeah, we were in Sweden for a few days. <laughs> Just don't even try to understand my travel schedule. I'll post, I'll do a video like on my crazy travel. I've been in like, I think like two dozen countries so far uh, in 2022. It's getting a little crazy. So many communities uh, that need help. And then also, you know, Jack uh, Schwartz was in college for years. So he couldn't travel. Now he finally graduated college. He's closing in on uh, 3 million and year or one year, he's made basically a million bucks. And again, he has some losses. Um, a lot of short wins, you know, SBFM, CRXT, SST, VERU. He goes along every now and then. Um, but this is what you can do 
If you are prepared, I want to show you example after example after example. People have different strategies. We're trading different stocks, but everyone's pretty much using the seven step framework. Whether you go long or short, I can't encourage you enough to learn the seven step framework. I'll post a blog post um, to the seven step framework. There's going to be three links below one where you can learn why I thought there was going to be a crash and I, I turned out to be right, unfortunately. Uh, two, if you want to join me, roll in and surprise guests. Um, you know, learning in person uh, in probably Miami, but definitely Vegas in Austin. We're going to do like a little American tour. Um, very excited for that. But really got to give props. Student of the week right now, um, Tim Lento. You know, this is amazing. Just year to date, he's over 750,000. Um, but just in the past few days, I mean, this was his big winner um, this week. OST, he absolutely nailed it. Every single one of you in the challenge chat room should now pay more attention to Tim Lento's weekly uh, webinars. Like he gives a webinar every single week. I see some people being like, oh, I don't want a short. Even if you're not a short seller, you should learn from him. Okay. He has the right mindset. He has the right perspective. He's now over 2 million. Um, and he absolutely nailed this OST short. Shorting this at 37, covering the next day at four. He does not usually cover that quickly, but when a stock drops, you know, 80% plus, 90% plus, you take those profits. This is OST, um, FYI. It, it, it spiked way too much and it just collapsed. Um, pretty impressive, pretty amazing. He didn't catch the exact top, mind you, and he's not, he didn't cover the exact bottom. He took the meat of the move. So everyone, please congratulate Tim Lento um, underneath this video too. I want you to be more supportive of each other. Like when one of us, you know, wins big, we all win because now Tim Lento is, you know, frankly, richer, happier, more giving with his lessons, more knowledgeable based on every single successful trade. And I'm grateful for every single one of these traders that I mentioned and more, you know, I, I can make a whole video like would be like a five hour video of just all the traders that I'm grateful for lately, giving back to the community. That's why I love this community. It's not just about any one trade, any one trader. It's adding to the collective wisdom. And I know that might sound corny, but that's what's going on. And that's why my top students and I succeed when pretty much every other um, niche that I see, every chat room that I see, whether they're liars, they don't show all their trades, whether they're just getting destroyed. Um, it's a tough time for a lot of traders right now. And you can see my top students and I are still profiting. Maybe not as much as 2021, but we're still green and we're learning. So uh, with that in mind, congrats to all these students. Let me talk about a few stocks that I was watching. RGBX, um, I gave a challenge webinar. I highly encourage you uh, challenge students to watch Friday's webinar. I went for over two hours. I was exhausted, but I wanted to go over this. Um, RDBX was a, a beautiful short squeeze. And again, I know that there are a lot of shorts in this market, but part of the reason why I haven't been shorting is it's really dangerous. It doesn't matter if you're right fundamentally on your short. It doesn't matter if you say, oh, this is a scam. This stock belongs to zero. Maybe eventually it does. But because there are so many wannabe shorts right now, especially on Fridays, why? Why are you crowding yourselves out? And like I say, you know, short sellers, people ask like, how do you know? The short selling data is not accurate. I know that they say like, oh, it's updated like weekly or monthly. The short selling data is irrelevant, if not worse, dangerously wrong. Um, what I've learned though, is all the short sellers love trying to get other people to short it. And they talk all about it. Like if you ever meet a short seller in person, they're like, hi, I'm Dave, I short sell. And they're so proud of it. You don't even ask. Um, so thank you, short sellers. If, if you know a short seller, don't tell them that we know. We want them to continue like talking at the, the, you know, uh, talking, talking up their position because that helps us understand that there's a short squeeze going on. RDBX was a great short squeeze, even as the markets dropped all day Friday. So congrats. I saw a lot of students nailing RDBX. I personally didn't trade it. I'm not great at uh, buying shorts, uh, squeezes. So I didn't do that. KGKG is one I'm watching. This one I underestimated on the way up here. Um, and then, you know, I mean, this is, this is a seven step framework to a T, okay? To a T. This, you got the one and the two, like uptrending, little uptrending, turns into a three pattern, which is bigger uptrending, turns into a four crash, tries to do a little five, but not much. Then it dips a little bit. Then we get a classic number five bounce. 
Number six, if you want to short, but I, I, you know, I don't short any stocks, but I have never shorted a two cent stock. It's just good to see the bounces and the valleys, the peaks in the valleys. Um, and now in two days, it's dropped from basically two one to one four five. I would love, love, love a third red day, and then either Monday or Tuesday next week. Um, I'd be looking for a bounce, but that's not to say that every stock has to bounce. Like let's learn from ABML. This was a nice runner and it tried to bounce and it couldn't. Um, IMTE was a fantastic runner and it, it just absolutely got destroyed. Um, IMTE is part of the reason why I didn't try to dip by DOGZ because I thought that it wouldn't, you know, bounce like the other one did, uh, or the other one did not. So, um, I underestimated it. I don't mind underestimating. I don't mind missing plays. For the month of April, I made about 6,000. That's probably uh, definitely my worst month in the past few years, but I was green. And what did the NASDAQ do for the month? Negative 12%. The S&P and the Dow were down like five or 6%. You know, big companies like Facebook, Netflix, um, so many more. Now, Amazon was down 15% on Friday. Like the markets are in this very volatile repricing phase. You don't want to just stick in like a position and be like, I stick my flag here. I plant my flag. I will not budge. Be adaptable. Okay. Anything can happen in these markets. You might not realize it. Amazon now has a really, uh, you know, tough resistance uh, to try to, you know, I mean, support just broke. I mean, this was a triple bottom and support just got um, annihilated with a terrible uh, earnings report. And this is probably what's going to happen. Like when you have these companies and Google also, I mean, Google is now this, this kind of like head and shoulders pattern. When you have the biggest, best companies in the world, like Google and Amazon, like the most efficient, the smartest people, the hardest workers, the overworked workers, when they're not doing well, how do you think smaller, less well-managed companies are going to do? Like this is going to be an atrocious earning season. So expect the worst so that you're not disappointed. Don't be like Kathy Wood and say, oh, Zoom is revolutionizing the world. The stock has to come back. The stock is crap. The chart is crap. Your thesis is wrong. Maybe they have a revolutionary technology. Maybe it's already priced in. Did you ever think about that, Kathy Wood? PLTR. Another one where she was like, this is changing the world. Absolutely destroyed. TDOC. This is her latest calamity. I think I read somewhere where she lost like two plus billion. I don't know if that's true, but I mean, don't invest in a company with a chart like this. I don't care how much you love your technology. Like I said, once upon a time I lost big because I fell in love with a company and its technology. Instead, prioritize price action. You're not trading any company's technology, you're trading the stock. I know that some people think that one is the same, you know, like, oh, the technology, the company, the stock, it should all be the same. It's not. A technology might be great. It might already be all the way priced in, okay? Netflix should not go down 40, 50, 60, 70% when they miss a few earnings, but it was just so fully valued and now their growth has stopped. Think about this. A lot of people don't even realize how much their accounts have been destroyed the past few days and weeks. They're going to start looking at more and more of their statements, not to mention looking at how much gas costs, food prices. This is a recipe for disaster. This is a recipe for people selling their stocks so that they can raise enough money just to live. Not to mention you got raising uh, rates. You know, it's just ugly. Um, that's not to say that there's no plays. I'm also watching ZYME. Uh, this one has been hit hard. Um, I would have liked it to show better strength, but you know, when you had this failure, um, you know, right around the market open on Friday, perfect double top. That's not something I want to buy. I know some people said like, Tim, it's still a percent gainer, a percent gainer with a failed double top in the morning. It's not just about, is it a percent gainer by day's end? It's how does it act? Okay. If you look at our DBX, which again, I didn't even trade, but at least when it breaks the day high here, um, and, and to be fair, I wasn't even awake. I mean, sometimes I, I trade, um, I trade the morning, sometimes I trade the afternoons, but on Friday I was just exhausted and I didn't really want to trade a choppy short squeeze, let alone when the Dow is dropping a thousand. So it wasn't ideal, but we can go and compare and we can look at our DBX, how it breaks the day high. Midday, this is part of the reason why I don't trade midday. You see the little breakout and it turned out to be a fake out. Got a lot of technical analysts, breakout buyers destroyed right here. But in the afternoon when it's safer, um, 
even though, you know, even if I had bought, I probably would have been chopped out. You had the nice breakout. Compare RDBX, which finished up 65% versus ZYME, which finished up 26% and faded all day. You want to focus on stocks that can make higher highs, not stocks that double top. So simple lessons. Um, I think that the biggest thing, and I was also watching TKAT, by the way, um, this didn't have a double top, it had like a little morning head and shoulders. But the biggest thing is to be selective, okay? Leave that comment below. Tell me if you're being safe. Tell me if you're getting destroyed. Tell me if you promise to be selective. Congratulate uh, Tim Lento. Congratulate anybody on really uh, who's, you know, navigating this tough market. Um, leave comments, like let's interact. I'm so sick of people thinking that this is just about money. This is just about like likes. Oh, it's for your ego. I want you to do better, okay? When I do this, you know, this, this event with Roland, yes. like, Austin will be both him and I are exhausted a lot of the time. He's got like four kids. I've got too many charities and too many projects. We don't take this lightly. We don't just be like, oh, let's dig into our ridiculous schedules so that we can teach people in person. We don't profit off of this. It's actually probably a net loss if you looked at what we would do with our lives versus this, you know, taking six days, not to mention traveling there. Um, but we do this because we want more successful students. Roland is one of my millionaire students. He went from 4,000, he's closing in on 2 million. Um, great family man. This is what I want more of. And I'm so grateful for Roland and people like Tim Lento and everybody in the community who's like, wow, these lessons, these patterns, these rules have changed my life. I wanna help speed up other people's learning curves. That's what this is about. I'll go over stocks till I'm blue in the face. I'll talk about the stocks. I'll tell you what I did right and wrong, but I just hope to speed up your learning curve, okay? Never follow alerts from anybody. Never think that your uh, journey is gonna be exactly alike. Like if you have $4,000 and be like, well, Roland turned 4,000 to nearly 2 million, I can too. You can do that with enough hard work, but Roland was also putting in 17 hour study days for basically his first year. So are you willing to do that? Most people aren't. And I don't even recommend that. That's like near burnout, but he was also a semi-pro uh, professional athlete with soccer. So I think athletes have a little bit of an advantage. I was a tennis player. We had that crazy work ethic. Maybe you don't. You have to judge for yourself. How hard do you want to study? How much time do you have? If you understand that this is a marathon and not a sprint, that there will be markets for earning like 2020 and 2021 and markets for learning. You can still earn while you learn, but there's not as many great plays right now in 2022. You just got to be honest about it. Um, that gives you more time to study the past. It gives you more time to go out and live. You can come to Bali. Bali is now open, quarantine free. Um, I was also in the Philippines for a month. Like you get to create the life that you want, but first you need enough knowledge and you need enough mastery. You're not going to create any life if you have to work for a boss, if you have to work a job that you hate like most people do because they have bills to pay and they have responsibilities. I'm fortunate. Roland is fortunate. All the students that I mentioned today are fortunate. We are the ones who took the lessons and we succeeded. And now everyone I mentioned is also trying to help other people, which is awesome. I have some students who don't want to help other people. They've just made a lot of money. They want to be quiet. They want to live a private life. That's fine. That's up to them. But I'm always encouraged with every student who wants to give back to the community. Um, so hopefully I can, you know, advocate that because I think that the community gets better. It's also very meaningful. I know Roland and I have had several discussions when, you know, we have someone succeed under our tutelage. Like Roland actually has some millionaire students. I'll let him talk about that now too. Um, but it's so gratifying and that's what I want more of. I mean, I'm filming this in the middle of the night. I should be sleeping, but I'm going over all these patterns. I'm looking at all these students and like, just look at this. The NASDAQ really took out these multi-week, multi-month lows. Like this is ugly. So no matter how excited you are to trade and you want to make all this money right away, stay safe, okay? Right now, at the end, I'm filming this at the end of April um, 2022, and I'll post it, I guess what, like May 1st. Um, this is not the time to be aggressive. This is the time to be meticulous. Look at what's happening around you understand if someone's not showing all their trades, there's a reason because they're getting destroyed and they, they're, you know, 
insecurities can't take it if they post all their trades on social media. Um, I know some people post like one or two screenshots. If you ever follow any of these screenshot heroes, tell them to post all their trades, every single one with position sizes and risks and you know the plans too. They'll make excuses galore. I've seen it too many times before. We had a lot more traders on Profitly once upon a time, but one by one, the traders left because I was like, you have to show all your trades. They didn't like that. So never forget 90% of traders lose. In tough markets like this, it's very apparent why. They hold and they hope, they break rules. Um, you don't need to do that. Follow the rules, learn the rules, first of all, stay disciplined, study up, study the past. Remember, I'm nothing more than a glorified history teacher. I didn't know, like, if you watch this presentation with me calling the crash, I didn't know, I wasn't like, by April 30th, this is what's gonna happen. I just saw signs of over-speculation when all the dumbest people you know are getting rich because they're just holding you know that the market is going to correct dumb people don't stay rich very long okay it might be fun for them in their own little minds but you can't be irresponsible and not face the repercussions and unfortunately this pandemic and the stimulus check and you know robin hood um, and all these you know bubble stocks all combined to create this powder keg of idiocy and it's not like i'm the smartest person in the world like you'd be shocked at some of the dumb stuff that I do. Um, but at the same time, guess what? I'm not a gambler. I'm not a gunslinger. I know the rules. I am experienced. So I didn't know exactly when the crash would happen, but I knew that all of the, you know, bad, irresponsible behavior was in place, which always, always leads to negative consequences. And now you have a lot of the most celebrated Discord promoters hiding out in Mexico, trying to hide from the feds. You got the penny stock promoters who pump the most. Some of them are getting arrested. The ones who are getting arrested are probably flipping on the other promoters. That's why all the promoters in OTC land are quiet. Like there's a lot of stuff that I saw happening. I called it out, but you can still profit from the bubble. It's not like I was shorting during the bubble. Like I said, I've only shorted Robinhood. Um, I profited nicely. The past two years have been my best two trading years in my 20 plus trading year uh, career, right? I've made a million dollars plus each of the last two years, donated it all to charity. Very proud to now have 25 millionaire students. That's what I focus on. So I hope I can get through to some of you. I've asked you to click the links below, join me and Roland and surprise guests in person. Watch this video from six months ago. Um, this was in November, or I guess it was like five and a half months ago, where I was saying that there's a lot of warning signs. It's probably best to be safe. Hardly anybody listened to me. Like the whole conference mocked me as like being overly worried. And now, you know, not just the stock markets, but Bitcoin. I mean, when I gave this talk, uh, Bitcoin, I think it was like around 60 or 62,000. Now it's halved, right? Not in a good way. Not like a Bitcoin halving, like the price is halved. Um, so just be careful and study the history of the market. I'm nothing more than a glorified history teacher. I am not the smartest. I am not the best, but I have refined my trading process to be safe. I have refined my teaching process to speed up everyone's learning curves. Um, so I'm very excited for this in person. It's been a while. I know many of you have been asking for it. Um, I'll post the link below just to understand this is gonna fill up quickly. It's not like we're gonna have like hundreds if not thousands of people. It's gonna be a small group of people. Um, you know, I, I want everyone to really network and, and take this seriously. Um, so this will fill up fast, FYI. Just giving you the warning. I know I'm gonna get people who see this video too late. They're gonna to try to join in and it's gonna be sold out. Understand, it's all about those who want to take action. Um, for me, it's, it's quality over quantity in students these days. If you have any doubts, if you're negative, if you think you're going to get rich overnight, bye. I don't have time for that. Um, if you don't like me swearing, if you don't like my grammar, if you don't like my clothes, I don't care. I don't care. Get out of my feed. Get away from my videos. Um, I hope to really weed out the lazy and the egotistical and those with toxic attitudes. I say this quite a bit. You know, life is too short to deal with negative people or people with toxic attitudes or lazy people. You know, I'm really only interested in the hardest workers. They make the best students. They inspire me. I like hanging out with them. I like teaching them. So if that's you, you can click some links below. If that's not you, it's okay. You know, go watch Netflix. They need more subscribers these days. Um, but 
I'm excited. Uh, you know, I know it's a scary market right now, but there's still opportunities and it's a great, great time to learn. If you can really learn when it's a bad market or a slow market, you can really be better prepared when it's a faster, bigger, better market, maybe 2023 or 2024. I hope it's far out in the distance. It gives you more time to prepare. I'll see you in the chat room. I got to get some sleep.